Now, in the meantime, the shock waves over Nigeria's land border closure, which continues to sweep across neighboring countries, reverberates from different parts of the country, with some hailing the decision and others left groaning. This report takes a critical review of the impacts of the closure. Take a look. Nigeria shares land borders with the Republic of Benin in the west, Chad and Cameroon in the east, and Niger in the north. Its coast lies on the Gulf of Guinea in the south, and it borders Lake Chad to the northeast. The challenges of safeguarding Nigeria's borders is one that seems to be defiance of the efforts of authorities charged with the tax. It has been the cause for serious debate in Nigeria, especially since the emergence of the terrorist group Boko Haram and supposed terrorists. The implication of Bother's closure was that the Nigerian Customs Service, the Nigeria Immigration Service, National Boundary Commission and the various military and security agencies had practically failed in their responsibilities, especially with the announcement of the Nigeria Immigration Service NIS disclosing that there are 87 official borders and more than 1,400 illegal border roads in the country. When we close the legitimate routes, the problem of our people is compounded by the fact that those who do legitimate businesses are also stranded, stranded and caught in the crossfire. What has led to this is the failure of those people doing their job. Because your job as uh, customs officials or whatever immigration is to be able to let legitimate trade go through and illegitimate trade not go through. The closure of the country's borders seems to have led to increase in prices of some food items such as rice, frozen chicken and turkey. Statistics say Nigeria imported fish worth $71 million, $56 million and $43 million from Iceland Russia and Norway respectively in 2007. Despite having a coastline of 853 kilometers bordering the Atlantic Ocean as well as fresh and mangrove swamps, creeks, bays, coastal rivers, estuaries, bays and near and offshore waters, Nigeria still depends on fish importation to meet most of her fish demands. This development was due to the lack of investments to encourage large-scale commercial fishing, which should bridge the current 2.1 million metric tons supply gap. In 2018, rice imports quantity for Nigeria amounted to 2,101,000 tons. Though the country's imports quantity fluctuated substantially in recent years, Nigerians have spent over 1 billion naira on rice consumption. The consumption rate now is 7.9 million tons and the production rate is at 5.8 tons per annum. Rice output has dropped due to higher input costs, insecurity and widespread flooding in the main growing regions. And my visit to one of the markets here in Lagos, Nigeria, tells the story. What's going on? Ah, my brother, it's been, it has been very, very hard to Nigerians, even with that say rice, you understand? We are not happy about it. Okay. Everything rice, since then rice go up. So I don't know why. Since they said our own is available for we to eat, I think the price is supposed to be down. So, uh, this one, when we are selling those rice, they bring it from Kutonu rice, Thailand rice. Mm. This one then, yeah, this one was uh, 650, okay. even 600. But now we are selling this one at 950, 1000. 950, 1000. Okay. Yeah. So, how about this one? This one, now, this one is before, this one was um, 1312, now it's 2000. Nigeria rice is not good at all. No good at all. Because if you want to buy, you buy a cup of rice, 400 naira. Why not the rice will not come cheap? So, I know, like, I'm not happy. Like, that's Nigeria rice. It's not good. If, it's, if you cook them, you know, it will be like a bar. So, it's not good at all. No matter how it look like, at least let them open our border because we are suffering too much. How I can have bag of rice that will be buying it 12,000, 30,000? At least two, five, three thousand. Nigeria rice supposed to start from 8,000, 10,000, but now it's 21,000. I'm so surprised. That is why you see many people because of hungry. They can't do anything. 
They can cost anything, can give them money. They, they don't mind, they will do it. Even some people are here, somebody see Gary, come on Gary. Before, they, they used to give us kilo 900. Now, nah, as if we are buying enough, they give us 1,100. Why is 900? As if we are buying plenty. And if you ask for 20, they will give us 5. Why we ask for 20? They are not, they are not give up. We are not seeing. Uh, it is very difficult. As it is, before it's cut, they used to cut it, bring up. Before they, uh, now they, uh, they go use and bring food chicken, come. And uh, now we go come cut them. And uh, it's, it's too expensive. It's too expensive for us. In the meantime, Reports say in major markets here in Lagos, the prices of some of the items had increased between 42% and 100% from August when the borders were closed to the last week of September. Meanwhile, in an exclusive interview with the Director General of the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, the closure is a mixed bag. Well, I think it's a mixed bag. Um... Of course, that the business of our members across the border is hindered. Uh, because of the ETLS and the, all the economic integration activities uh, of, with, within the ECOWAS sub-region, uh, it is evident that our, our members enjoy economies of scale around the uh, West African countries. So the closure, for instance, will greatly limit their capacity to have that free flow. To that extent, uh, it has negatively impacted our business. However, some senators criticized the decision on the grounds that the border closure has further put pressure on the economy and deprived many Nigerians of their livelihood. Uh, I think it's a good policy by the, go by the president, but I think it was badly implemented. Mr. President, no country wakes up just one day and say you are closing the border for 28 days. You have duly active people who are doing legit business, who are trying to export their product to external countries that all of a sudden to wake up and just found that the borders have been closed for the next 28 days. A great number of Nigerians that are those that are not of means, majority of them, they are affected by this closure. Some of them, those even uh, industrialists that have all their goods into the West African uh, sub uh, West African sub region, they've conquered the place. They cannot move their goods now. Even some of them, they render some services. They cannot move. We are experiencing interesting times in the nation at the moment, and if the borders are not open before December, it portends a bleak Christmas for many Nigerians, given the astronomical rise in the prices of both the local and imported rice. Kelly, Agiga, Galaxy Television News, Lagos.